Yes, good afternoon. Sava here from Football Heritage TV. It's the day after the game before and Tottenham Hotspur came away from Old Trafford. The theatre of dreams with a two-all draw and we take a point back to White Hart Lane with us. And of course, I use theatre of dreams loosely because Man United are not what they were. But what a very good point I think it was for Tottenham. I understand people will be very disappointed that we didn't get the three points. But all in all, with the injuries, with the suspensions, I thought that it was a good point. At, it's still a difficult place to go at times, as Aston Villa found out when they lost there the other week. I thought it was a good point. I thought that both teams will feel they had a couple of chances to win the game. I don't think either team really created many clear-cut chances where you could say that both goalkeepers were worked. But a very good point nonetheless. And the inquests, having spoken to Man United fans and been on this morning with Man United fans on different shows, the inquest from the United fans is very much what's going on at this club. We're terrible to watch. We play bad football. There's no plan. Where's the Ajax way? Ten Hag's got to go. Um... You know, so Jim Ratcliffe needs to get in now and start doing some things. And the feeling at Tottenham Hotspur couldn't be more polar opposite. Because I think even though, even if you're disappointed that we didn't win the game, the positives far outweigh the negatives from that game and from the first 21 games of this season. Let's get into it. So when you look at, before I do, just want to say, I, I did say to all. So uh, um, just... Let's get into it. So when you saw the team lineups, we knew that there was a chance Kulisevsky wouldn't play. And it turned out that way. It turned out that he was ill. And there was a lot of worry about, hang on, it's now going to be Skip and Hoybier with Benton Court. And I think most people are, I don't want to say comfortable, but we accept it when, okay, one of them will have to play. But I think when both of them play, there was a lot of panic. But we didn't have to worry in the end. We didn't have to worry. And then the team news at the back was Van der Ven or Romero. Which one was going to start? Was Royale going to keep his place in the team? Was Dragasheen going to come straight into the team? And none of that happened. He chucked both of them in together, Van der Ven and Romero. Van der Ven been out since November. Romero's been out for about five weeks or so, maybe a bit more if I, if I remember rightly. But both players came in to play together, which for me was a tiny bit risky. Um, both obviously going to be fatigued, cramped, look tired. They haven't played for so long, but he put them straight back into the team. And then the team news up front, I don't think anyone was surprised. It was going to be Werner on the left, Richie through the middle and Brennan Johnson on the right, because the only other option was either Jamie Donnelly and Santiago. And we've seen he's not going to play those guys and Brian Hill. And we've seen that he's, had most of his moments as a substitute. Um, Man United, I thought, started well. I thought the first five, ten minutes, Man United set their stall out early, that they were going to try and move the ball through our midfield quickly, try and get that ball over the top to Garnacho on the right. Uh, by the way, I thought that was a really good matchup the, the, between Garnacho and, and a doggy. And, against, and, and on the left-hand side, they were trying to get the ball to Rashford as quickly as possible. And they started like a house on fire four minutes into the game. Hoyland, for me, I mean, this is a guy that scored one goal all season, then comes out with that. You can't pick it, can you? You just, it just always seems to happen against Tottenham. But fair play to them. They came out and started well. But after that, you could see they retreated five yards, 10 yards, 15 yards. You could see slowly but surely our style of play, that everything they didn't have, which was a style of play, a philosophy, a passing game we did have. And fair play to Postacoglu for keeping that when so many players that are key components in that philosophy are out injured. But we kept moving the ball. Yeah, we didn't create a lot of chances, but we were moving the ball. We were, we were, were moving it from left to right, trying to go through the middle, trying to get Brennan Johnson and Werner in down the right and left, even though we didn't get that much success from them in that first half. We were still trying and we were prodding and we were probing. And then the goal didn't come from any of that. The goal came from a corner kick. Lovely corner from Pedro Porro, who swung in a number of good corners last night. Very good delivery. And for me, a really nice header from Richie. Uh, fair play. Good header. It's what you want your centre forward to be doing. Not power, just glancing it on into the far post. 
and Tottenham are back in it. And you're thinking, right, go on. Let's push on and win this game now. And then Spurs shot themselves in the foot, really. Um, it was a, uh, a fortuitous goal, would we say? Some some neat, intricate footwork, but ultimately from Man United ended up with being a bit of a ricochet into the path of Rashford, who coolly slotted home. There's been some people talking about, could Romero have done better? Could Porro have done better? Could this person have done better? For me, I just think it was a bit fortuitous. No one's, re no one's fault, really. Always you can look at, if you want to be completely granular and say he could have done this and he could have done that. But they had target us down that right-hand side all game. They knew Brennan Johnson wasn't really going to offer any support to Porro. And Marcus Rashford got his just rewards 2-1 at half time. And you figure to yourself, what can we do here at half time? And there wasn't really a lot. There wasn't really a lot on the bench. So unless it was bringing on defenders, there wasn't really anything we could do. And you're thinking, right, stay in the game for the first five, 10 minutes of the second half. Don't go 3-1 down away at Old Trafford. 45 seconds later, it's 2-2. Lovely goal by Bentoncourt. Lovely, uh, lovely ball from Romero that took out about four or five players. Um, Werner, simple pass into, um, I mean, people are saying it's an assist. It is an assist, but I mean, he gave the ball five yards to uh, Bentoncourt. Good shift of feet, rifled it past Anana with no chance. Then, for me, the, um, the the game after that, I thought that after the first hour, both teams looked quite tired. Lots of the ball being given away, quite sloppy, players with cramp. Um, and it almost looked as though both teams didn't quite have enough to get the game over the line. We had a lot of corners. We created some chances, but no real chances. They got Rashford into some good positions, but didn't get any chances out of it. And then, um, sorry, I, I'm a, I'll be amiss if I didn't mention the Romero header, by the way, as well, which cannoned off the bar. Sorry, I should have mentioned that in the first half. So that could have changed things. But as the second half got deeper and deeper, you just got the feeling that no one was going to score. I don't know about you guys. I just got the feeling that no one was really creating anything clear cut. And no team really had their shooting boots on. And then with about a minute to go of four injury time minutes, the ball was whipped over beautifully by Garnacho. We can all see it in slow motion. You're thinking, oh my God, he's going to put this in the bottom corner, McTominay. And he headed it over the bar. And it's moments like that where you go, phew. All in all, I will say a, a, a good performance. I'm not going to go overboard about it. It was a good performance in terms of possession, keeping the ball. Um, we looked superior to them from that aspect. I think we saw... Uh, we saw them set out their stall. It was going to be long balls over the top. They continued to do it. Every pass from Bruno Fernandes was was trying to find them in behind. Um, and ultimately, neither team got the three points that they wanted. But some good football we played in patches. Um, I'm not going to go into digging out players or praising players too much, but I will say that Benton Core was, was fantastic. Um, looked tired towards the end, which is understandable. He's had a year out. But... A really nice pass for the football. Looks like a cool, calm, collected player in and amongst some madness in that midfield. But I do think the two all, both teams could make claims that it was fair. If we had nicked it, I think it would have been fine. I don't think they should have nicked it, but they did come closest to nicking it. But a good point away from Old Trafford. And the reason I've said so many positives are Van der Ven's back now. Romero's back now. James Madison's back in training. Uh, Benson Core now has played a few games in a row after his two horrific injuries. A Basuma, Saar, they're going to be back from the AFCON in a couple of weeks' time. Son, depending on how well South Korea do, he'll be back in. And, you know, for me, there's so many positives. I like what we're adding at the back. Don't get me wrong, I think there's work to be done at the back. I do. I don't think our defence is as good as everyone thinks, but it's getting there. It's much better than it used to be. And, and we need to get them, we need to get this back four, five, six, seven games in a row again to get them back to that standard. The midfield has now got options. Yes, we might see some comings and goings with the likes of Hoybier and Skip maybe going out in the next couple of years and a few new players coming in. But I think in those areas we can compete. For me, I've always said this. A difference between where we're going to be this year, which is good. I think anywhere between third, third and fifth, third and fifth at the moment. Um, I think we've pulled away from the West Ham's, we've pulled away from the Brighton's, the Chelsea's, and the Man United's. And barring disaster, we should finish in that top five. 
Can it be fourth? Can it be third? It could be. I think it's going to be a good tussle between Spurs, Villa and Arsenal for third, fourth, fifth. For me, what I would say, and people will take this negatively, it's not. For me, I think if you do want to go to that level, if you do want to compete with City and Liverpool, got to buy better forwards. Sonny, yes. The rest are just not quite good enough. I think they're good enough if you want to finish fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh. I think that's fine. But if we have aspirations, what I'm, I'm not saying right now in this window, by the way, I expect in the next few windows, we'll go and add a couple of bits of quality, a couple of top forwards, whether they're wide right, wide left, through the middle, a couple of top forwards that can really take a game to opposition and hurt them. But there's so many positives at the moment. Foster Coglu's got us playing a nice brand of football. It's not been there all the time, but you can see what he's trying to do. The consistency with that style will come over time. It will. The longer we do this, the more that style of play will be there. We are resilient. Everyone is working hard, pulling in the right direction, and it's a good time to be a Spurs fan. We can see a plan in place. Well, I, I feel like this is the first time for me in 20-odd years under Enoch, I can see a plan in place. So hopefully we continue that and we move forward to Man City in the Cup, which should be a really intriguing game. They're the most informed team in the Premier League. They've scored the, they've scored the most goals in the Premier League. They're scoring an average of 3.1 goals a game at the moment. It's going to be tough. But let's see what happens between now and that game. Everybody, thank you so much. Let me know your thoughts. Please leave your comments below. And as always, come on, you Spurs.